So in this video, we're talking about how we quickly add some logic to the back of our app and how simple it is to connect our app to our logic, as well as the difference between how we do this in WatchKit and how we do this on iOS. Uh, later in the video, I'll also be talking about what these files do and um, sort of the structure of your app logic. So the first thing we want to do is connect our interface with our logic here in our extension. So as you can see, I've just clicked on our on my interface controller here and then clicked the assistant editor. If you've developed for iOS before, you'll be um, accustomed to this assistant editor and how you can quickly link code to your logic, uh, to your interface. So of course we want to, so for this quick video, I want to update the text of this label when this button is pressed. To do that, we need to have an outlet for our label, which we're going to call label, and I need an action from our button. So we go. So each time, what I'm just doing here is I'm control, pressing control, and then dragging over from the object to our code. So for the second one, we want an action, and then we want it to be button pressed. Okay, so what are these? If you've developed for iOS before, you'll know what these are, but for anyone else, I'm just going to quickly explain them. IB outlets are a reference from your code to an object in your interface file. At the same time as you control drag from the interface to the code, and of course you add this object to the code, a reference to the object in code is also being added to the interface file. So if we click on the label, we go up here, we click the outlets here, we can say the label has an outlet in in our interface controller class. So that's quickly how that works. Now, what a function is, sorry, what an IB action is, is it's essentially the same thing. It's a reference on our object over here in our interface. As you can see here, sent action, button pressed, references to our interface controller. So that when you press the button, the interface can go, okay, I need to do this in this, um, class. So they're just references between the interface and the code. The difference between regular iOS development and WatchKit development is that in iOS to change an attribute you could just go equals whatever the new attribute value we want it to be. So in iOS to change the text we just go label, we just go label dot text equals new string. Because we, of course, can do that because, because the interface and the um, code are the same thing. They're running sort of together. So when we make changes to an attribute in our code, we're changing the same attribute as that's in the interface. Because in WatchKit, these are separate things. There's an interface running separately from the extension with the logic. Anything we do to objects on the screen, we have to do with methods. So of course, as you can see, there's an error here because we can't do this. Instead, we need to exit all this out and we need to go label.setText. Now we can put our new string in here and this method will call and talk to our interface and tell the interface to change the text when the button is pressed and we run all this code. If we just run our app, we can see how this works. As you can see, we have our button, we have our label, we press our button, and it changes our string to new string. Uh, so that's the real basics of linking our interface with our code and with our logic. In the next video in the series, I'm going to give you an overview of how this logic works on WatchKit and WatchOS.